Hello Universe, Josh here. This video is titled Video Blog Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I mentioned before in my kind of introductory video that I'm into Dungeons and Dragons and you know if, if that's too geeky for you um, you can just turn the camera off right now because you probably don't want to hear all this. It's, it'll be boring and won't make much sense to you. But I just thought I'd talk about this hobby a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do this regularly, it's probably just going to be a one-time thing, so you're not going to hear what happened like last week or this week in the D&D the game that I'm playing in. Um, but I will tell you a little bit about it, I guess. Um, I'm a dungeon master. Uh, I have been for some years now. I don't uh, I probably started in 2002, so I'm not that experienced compared to some of the other DMs out there. But I, you know, I've had my, run my fair share of adventures in several different campaigns and um, killed my own fair share of player characters. Uh, which is, if you don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, that's not a bad thing. It's a well, whatever. Um, uh, my latest campaign that I'm running right now, though, is uh, Monty Cook's Tolis, uh City by the Spire campaign. It's an entire campaign set in one city, and um, I am quite enjoying it a lot. There's a lot of good stuff in that in that campaign. Comes with its own ready-made adventures, so I don't have to do uh, hardly any work at all. I just have to read the stuff beforehand. Um, I find though that uh, when it's not my own material I'm less motivated to run it and less motivated to get prepared beforehand. Um, I've always found that motivation has been my biggest uh, <laughs> stumbling block as a dungeon master because um, there's always something else I'd rather be doing than uh, writing the next adventure or creating the next encounter. Um, I, I mean I get lots of good ideas but then I don't really, I can't implement them. Um, I'll maybe I'll show you. Pause. This is the Tolis tome. Um, as you can see, it's very thick. It's something like 670 pages. Uh, I have listings in the front here of all the player characters so far. Um, as you can see, there's been a few. They, I encourage them to write a little something. They do a little doodle or signature or whatever, whatever they happen to want to do in that. So that's a big hefty book there. You notice it's got these ribbons hanging out of it. I'll check it out for yourself. I'll put uh, Monty Cook's uh, address in the description. Um, his website and from there you can read all about Tolis and there's a whole community and stuff. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you some of my dice because this is a geeky video after all so if you're still watching just put up with it. This has got to be one of the biggest D20s on the market. Um, uh, compare that to something. There's a USB flash drive there, jump drive thingy to compare it to. It's just what was convenient on my desk right now. Um, typical D20 is that size. So there's a, a comparison. Um, so I'm pretty proud of being the person with the biggest D20 in my group. Uh, what else do we have that's cool in here? We have Zaki Hedrons. That's a hundred cider. Um, Zaki is the name of the guy who invented and patented this particular version of the hundred sided die. It's not really a die, it's just a ball with numbers on it. It's not a platonic solid. And I have lots of these, just regular six ciders millions of those. Sparkly 20 cider. I need a better camera. Um, one pound coin which I put 
numbers on just in case I need to generate um, one or twos. Uh, after I got that, I also discovered that you can get binary dice with zeros and ones on them. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, here's a cool die. This is a D6 from um, Advancing Hordes Dice and Miniatures. I'm not sure how visible it is on there. But that's a griffin carved into it um, by uh, an artisan in Victoria, British Columbia, which is where I grew up. And um, these are really cool. Go to, um, well, I guess you can Google it. Go to Advancing Hordes Dice and Miniatures, advancinghordes.com, and um, buy dice like these from them because they're awesome. They're very cool. And it's, uh, yeah, I don't do it justice here. But you can see, like, they have a great website. You can see little pictures of every dice, every die they sell, and every little set that they have available there. What else? I have some bigger D6s. What did I want to show you? Here's a cool die uh, that I got from Advancing Hordes. Um, it's the planets including the moon, uh, the sun, the ascending and descending lunar nodes. So the, the idea with these is um, here's the uh, zodiac die, Libra, Sagittarius, Leo, and such. So you roll these together and you, you can find out which you get a result of which planet and then which um, sign of the zodiac it's in and from that you can make predictions um, it's not real of course it doesn't really work but it's j it's fun for the for the game purposes now, this one has Pluto on it which I don't really like that the fact but I guess you can't avoid it because Pluto's um, it used to be a planet but it's not anymore uh, so Basically, what I do with Pluto is I assume that um, the PL now stands for dwarf planet in, in my mind now, or this like sign stands for dwarf planet, and then I roll further between the three current dwarf planets in the solar system: Pluto, Ceres, and Eris. Uh, what else can I? What else is dorky about me? Um, oh, I wanted to show you my uh, my character. Um, my friend Hoken runs a D and D campaign. He's running uh, Temple of Elemental Evil, uh, the Return to the Temple of Elemental Evil, um, also by Monty Cook, uh, but that that one was published through Wizards of the Coast. But anyways. Um, I've had se already uh, three characters. Th I'm on my third character in that adventure. Uh, my current character's name is Zarin Stickwalker. He's a wizard. Um, eighth level. I actually started him at eighth level, so that's not that's no feat. It's, I pre-generated him, uh, having several levels of experience already, um, and having his own repertoire of sc scrolls and spells and spell books and things like that. But, um, I was playing a, a Dwarven a Marshal, which was pretty cool. The Marshal has special abilities that he can grant just by... He's kind of the motivational speaker of the D&D &D group. He, he grants bonuses on certain skills like attack rolls or skills or saving throws or whatever you happen to choose to activate at that time. I actually almost missed that Marshal character now. But he died and I decided that it was time to not resurrect him again. You know, he or if he did get resurrected, he went his own separate way. I'm happier with uh, the Arcanist character because we didn't have an Arcanist. He's a devotee of Farlongan, god of roads, because the campaign takes place in the um, the world of Greyhawk, where such deities as Farlongan, Pelor, Hieronius, and so on. I don't know. I guess that's all I wanted to talk about. Just thought I'd make a video blog of that. The end. Bye.